Hello, I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we are ready for our April the 30th lesson, last day of April, and the last day of our third review, lesson 120, from uh, A Course in Miracles Workbook for Students, original edition. For morning and evening review, I rest in God, and I am as God created me. I rest in God. I rest in God today and let Him work in me and through me while I rest in Him in quiet and perfect certainty. While I rest in Him in quiet and perfect certainty. I rest in God today and let Him work in me and through me while I rest in Him in quiet and perfect certainty. And the other review for today, 110, I am as God created me. I am as God created me. I am God's son. Today I lay aside all sick illusions of myself and let my father tell me who I really am. I lay aside all sick illusions of myself and let my father tell me who I really am. I am as God created me. His son can suffer nothing, and I am his son. <laughs> on the hour today, say, I rest in God. And on the half hour, say, I am as God created me. That'll be our lesson for today, lesson 120. Uh, let's uh, go take a look in our text reading uh, for today. We're ready for the last section of chapter 17, and I think we'll read this uh, section uh, 9, The Conditions of Forgiveness. The Conditions of Forgiveness in chapter 17, Forgiveness and Healing. While you're turning there, let me tell you a little bit about parsnips. I'm going to read to you a little bit from the Baker's Creek Catalog. Uh, Pastanaca sativa. Pastanaca, I think that's how you pronounce it, sativa, which uh, parsley or parsnips in general. Uh, Northern European relative of the carrot. Parsnip roots are long, white, and after a hard frost or two, mild and sweet. So in early spring in most areas, as seed germinates best in cool weather and is slow to germinate even under the best conditions. Traditionally, gardens, gardeners would plant the seed rather thickly, just barely covering the seed and sow some radish seeds in the row also. The radishes sprout quickly, making the row's location or marking the lo rose location while the parsnips are germinating. The radishes mature quickly and are pulled, leaving the row to the parsnips, which require the whole season. Plant parsnips in rich and very deeply worked soil and allow plenty of space, 8 to 12 inches apart is ideal. May be stored right in the garden all winter or until the soil freezes. Old-fashioned crop that really deserves to be included in today's gardens. And a couple varieties in particular that they are uh, offering in the uh, Baker Creek catalog. One is the hollow crown parsley, real common one. Tasty, white, long root, sweet flavor. Harvest after frost. A standard in all fall gardens a popular variety in the 1820s. And another variety is the Harris model. And this one says, delicious, tender, and white 12 inch roots have a sweet flavor, refined in appearance, great boiled, fried, or used in parsnip bread. A good producer and popular variety. Okay, well, there's a little bit about parsnips. You have to try your hand at growing some parsnips. Take a little longer to sprout, so put a few radishes in the, in the row with, it, with them, and they'll come up quickly and mark the row, what they're saying. Okay, and uh, let's, 
keep in our mind all day today and apply it to our the happenings of the hour as we tell ourselves on the hour I rest in God and then on the half hour uh, I am as God created me okay all right now to our text the conditions of forgiveness the holy instant is nothing more than a special case or an extreme example of what every situation is meant to be. The meaning which the Holy Spirit's purpose has given it is also given to every situation. It calls forth just the same suspension of faithlessness and left unused that faith might answer to the call of truth. Let's read that again. The meaning which the Holy Spirit's purpose has given it is also given to every situation. It calls forth just the same suspension of faithlessness withheld and left unused that faith might answer to the call of truth. So we don't want to use our faithlessness, our, our, our doubt that uh, God's in charge and that our brother is one with us and that only good is real. We don't want to use our faithlessness. Oh, it'll come to us, but don't, don't respond to it. The holy instant is the shining example, the clear and unequivocal demonstration of the meaning of every relationship and every situation seen as a whole. Faith has accepted every aspect of the situation, and faithlessness has not forced any exclusion on it. It is a situation of perfect peace, simply because you have let it be what it is. Okay, paragraph 75. And as we're reading, I'm, I'm just down the hollow. I'm here in my garden, but just down the hollow, I'm hearing some wild turkeys this morning. So you may actually hear some. I don't know you. I don't know if you'll pick them up or not. But uh, anyway, some wild turkeys this morning. This simple courtesy. Okay, the simple courtesy of not responding to faithlessness, but but having faith in the Holy Spirit's uh, world, the real world. This simple courtesy is all the Holy Spirit asks of you. Let truth be what it is. Do not intrude upon it, do not attack it, do not interrupt its coming. Let it encompass every situation and bring you peace. Not even faith is asked of you, for truth asks nothing. Let it enter and it will call forth and secure for you the faith you need for peace. But rise you not against it. For against your opposition, it cannot come. 76. Would you not want to make a holy instant of every situation? For such is the gift of faith, freely given wherever faithlessness is laid aside unused. Wow, listen to that. Would you not want to make a holy instant of every situation? Wow. See the Holy Spirit? and allow that little miniature of heaven to come framed in time in every situation? Would you not want to make a holy instant of every situation? For such is the gift of faith, freely given wherever faithlessness is laid aside unused. And then the power of the Holy Spirit's purpose is free to use instead. This power instantly transforms all situations into one sure and continuous means for establishing His purpose and demonstrating its reality. What has been demonstrated has called for faith and has been given it. Now it becomes a fact from which faith can no longer be withheld. The strain of refusing faith to truth is enormous and far greater than you realize. The strain of refusing faith to truth is enormous 
and far greater than you realize. But to answer truth with faith entails no strain at all. <laughs> 77. To you who have acknowledged the call of your Redeemer, the strain of not responding to his call seems to be greater than before. This is not so. Before the strain was there, but you attributed it to something else, believing that the something else produced it. This was never true. For what the something else produced was sorrow and depression, sickness and pain, darkness and dim imaginings of terror, cold fantasies of fear, and fiery dreams of hell. And it was nothing but the intolerable strain of refusing to give faith to truth and see its evident reality. So it's going to be more noticeable now than it was before. We're, we're, because we're starting to wake up and realize that we were seeing things upside down and seem to you know, have to have all these um, ideas in place in order to remain secure. Well, now we're realizing that what we thought was security is, 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 is faithlessness. And we're beginning to put our faith in truth where we really can be at peace and secure. Paragraph 78. Such was the cruci... So let, let's look at that again. To you who have acknowledged the call of your Redeemer, the strain of not responding to his call seems to be greater than before. This is not so. Before the strain was there, but you attributed it to something else, believing that the something else produced it. This was never true. For what the something else produced was sorrow and depression, sickness and pain, darkness and dim imaginings of terror, cold fantasies of fear, and fiery dreams of hell. And it was nothing but the intolerable strain of refusing to give faith to truth and see its evident reality. 78. Such was the crucifixion of the Son of God. His faithlessness did this to him. Think carefully before you let yourself use faithlessness against him. For he is risen, and you have accepted the cause of his awakening as yours. You have assumed your part in his redemption and you are now fully responsible to him. Fail him not now. For it has been given you to realize what your lack of faith in him must mean to you. His salvation is your only purpose. See only this in every situation, and it will be a means for bringing only, only this. Wow, isn't that something? You have assumed your part in his redemption and you are now fully responsible to uh, the resurrected Christ in you. Fail him not now, for it has been given you to realize what your lack of faith in him must mean to you. His salvation is your only purpose. See only this in every situation. The Son of God, is His salvation is your only purpose. Is it your only purpose? See only this in every situation, and it will be a means for bringing only this. Wow, okay. So we're going to look for the, the resurrection of the Son of God in every situation. That's going to be our only purpose. Paragraph 79, the last paragraph of this section and the last paragraph of the chapter. When you accepted truth as the goal for your relationship, you became givers of peace as surely as your father gave peace to you. For the goal of peace cannot be accepted apart from its conditions, and you had faith in it, for no one accepts what he does not believe is real. Your purpose has not changed and will not change, for you accepted what can never change, and nothing that it needs to be forever changeless can you now withhold from it. Your release is certain. <laughs> Give as you have received, and demonstrate that you have risen far beyond any situation 
that could hold you back and keep you separate from him whose call you answered. Wow, isn't that a beautiful thought? We've answered the call of God and we, we want to continue in and indeed that's the only reality. It's changeless reality. And that's kind of a good place to uh, end and to remember our lesson today. I rest in God. I just rest in God. I let truth be true. Don't let faithlessness disturb my rest. I rest in God. I rest in God today and let Him work in me and through me while I rest in Him in quiet and perfect and in perfect certainty. And I am as God created me. I am God's Son. Today I lay aside all sick illusions of myself and let my Father tell me who I really am. When you lay aside those sick illusions of yourself, you're laying aside your faithlessness and you're having faith in truth. <laughs> nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. <laughs> all right, thank you all so, so, so much for joining me out here in this morning with the, the turkey gobblers in the in the distance, even if you can't hear them. Uh, beautiful day, and we're, we're so glad that you joined, or I'm so glad, we're all so glad that we're together. Until tomorrow, I rest in God, and I am as God created me. <laughs>